Unpassing talks between the federal government and ASO. Strike continues. Millions of dollars worth of donated rice for IDPs found locked up in a private warehouse in Lagos. House of Representative Panel Furious. In international news, missing persons in California wildfires now exceed 600. And in sport, Nigeria's Super Eagles in South Africa for first battle with Bayana Bayana in the do or die Africa Cup of Nations qualifier. This is ANN News. I am Ola Jumoke Olatunji. The gulf between the federal government and the academic staff union of universities appeared to have deepened on Thursday. The two sides had met to resolve the issues that engendered the current strike action by the union, but they were deadlocked after six hours of talks. The closed-door meeting was said to have discussed and reviewed the seven points in last year's memorandum of action. Labor Minister Chris Ngege, who led the government's negotiating team, told journalists before the meeting started that the federal government would like us to think about the students first because they are the ones losing in this deal. Some issues on the table include earned academic allowances, staff schools, pension matters, salary shortfalls, treasury single account exemptions, and state universities. The two parties have agreed to meet again next week. In another union matter, organized labor has begun a war of words with the governor's forum over the issue of minimum wage. It says the governor should not intimidate workers by threatening to sack them if the new minimum wage of 30,000 naira were implemented. The labor unions say this would lead to anarchy. Organized labor says the 30,000 naira figure was intensely debated and negotiated for one year before an agreement was reached by the Tripartite Negotiation Committee. Nigerian Labour Congress President Ayuba Waba released a statement telling workers to ignore the pronouncements credited to Governor's Forum President Abdulaziz Yari of Zinfara. Yari said on Wednesday every state except Lagos would go bankrupt if it has to pay 30,000 naira. He says states are finding it difficult to pay even the current minimum wage of 18,000 naira. Organized Labour says the agreement was among the Nigerian government, labor unions, and employers. It says the Nigerian constitution recognizes individual states in the collective bargaining process, not Nigerian governor's forum. The union wants President Muhammad Buhari that actions being taken by the governor's forum would present him as an anti-worker president. The House of Representatives Committee probing fraud in the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, says it has discovered another set of rice hidden in a warehouse in Lagos. It was only a day prior to this discovery that the committee released pictures of more than 160,000 bags of rice that were locked up in a private warehouse. This are tons of rice donated by the Chinese government for distribution to internally displaced persons in the northeast. These bags of rice were said to have rotted in that warehouse in Lagos. The committee says it is intensifying efforts to figure out how the rice was diverted from the port to the warehouses. The committee issued a warning to the public to be vigilant so it would not buy rotten rice should the perpetrators manage to get the consignment into the marketplace. The British government has reassured the Nigerian government of its commitment to support the Nigerian army in its fight against Boko Haram and terrorism. While visiting the theater commander of Operation Lafayette Dolly, Major General Abadiko Williamson, released the statement that the current collaboration between his country and Nigeria will continue. He also said his country would provide counter-improvised explosive devices, IEDs, training to Nigerian troops. Major General Diko praised the British liaison support team for their contributions to the fight against terrorism. He said the Nigerian military will remain professional in the discharge of its constitutional roles and in the conduct of counter-insurgency campaign in the Northeast. There is a worrying report that there is an imminent food crisis in Nigeria. To avert it, some food safety experts say the country would have to deploy innovation and technology into its food industry to increase productivity and ensure sufficiency. The experts have listed a host of factors that contribute to the food shortage forecasts. They include the country's rising population, huge technology gaps, lack of enabling environments for researchers, 
inadequate funding for research, high processing losses and lack of sustainable policy confronting the food industry. They say these factors could negatively affect the lives of the people if the government does nothing to safeguard food security. This all came out during the 42nd conference, an annual general meeting of the Nigerian Institute of Food Science and Technology recently held in Abelkota, Ogun State Capital. Nigeria's Independent National Electoral Commission says it would not fail the country in the conduct of next year's election. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubo made this promise while speaking at the 6th anniversary lecture and investiture into the Real News Hall of Fame in Lagos on Thursday. Yakubo says even though the commission knows conduct of the lecture would be a tough task, INEC is determined to conduct free, fair and credible and democratic elections that would contribute to political stability that would lead to greater economic prosperity. To accomplish this, Yakubo says the commission is diligently preparing and would ensure a transparent and inclusive electoral process. Nigeria is to benefit from a 9 billion naira fund being invested in youths across Africa over the next few years by American conglomerate International Business Missions Corporation, IBM. The country's director for empowerment for Nigerian youth and also director of software strategy, Deborah Majid, announced this at the 21st Century Women and Youth Innovation Technology at the United Nations in New York. Majid said Nigeria is one of the strategic countries for IBM in Africa. She says IBM will spend $25 million just on educating the youth to acquire the right skills training for future jobs. IBM has a large operation in Nigeria and has 120 employees with offices in Lagos and Abuja. Coming up, African stories. Seven peacekeepers killed in clashes near Ebola hit part of East Congo. And later, number of missing doubles to 631 in California wildfires. You are watching ANN. This used to be me. But that was before I got the perfect bag. It's handy and easy to use. All I need in one compact space, just like my MTN Extra Value Plan. I used to get one plan for my calls and then try to remember which data plan worked for me. Roaming was a totally different ball game. Not anymore. I've got the MTN Extra Value All-in-One Plan. If you're a data buff like me, you get extra data with some talk time. And if you like to make calls, you get extra talk time with some data. And when I'm abroad, I automatically browse, chat, and call right on the same plan. MTN Extra Value was made just for me. More of data or calls. Whichever one you prefer, MTN Extra Value is made just for you. in your house, at your office, on your phone or online. We are there. We have the facts behind the headlines. We cut to the chase with the news you really need. We cover every angle. We are the bigger, better news network. We are African News Network. ANN. Watch ANN News on MITV from a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is Anna News. A quick roundup of African stories. An EU funded report released this week says tens of thousands of people in Africa die each year because of fake and counterfeit medication. Manufacturers of the fake drugs are said to prey on poorer countries more than their richer counterparts, with more but up to 30 times greater penetration of fakes in the supply chain. It's added that the drugs are mainly made in China but also in India. Pakistan and the United Kingdom. The report says almost half the fake and low quality medicines reported to the World Health Organization WHO between 2013 and last year were found to be in sub-Saharan Africa. The report was also backed by Interpol and the Institute for Security Studies. Substandard of fake anti-malaria caused the death of between 64,000 and 158,000 persons per year in sub-Saharan Africa. WHO says the counterfeit drug market is worth around $200 billion worldwide annually, making it the most lucrative trade of illegally copied goods, and its impact has been devastating. 
Niger said more than 80 children were killed in 2009 by a teething syrup tainted with a chemical normally used in engine coolant and blamed for causing kidney failure. At least seven UN peacekeepers in the Democratic Republic of Congo are reported to have been killed in clashes of militias in an area that is at the center of West Ebola epidemic. A UN diplomatic source, Stephen Dijarich, said on Thursday soldiers from Malawi and one from Tanzania who are part of the UN peacekeeping operation in the DR Congo were killed in Benin territory, North Kivu. The deaths marked the biggest loss by the large UN force in the country since the rebels killed 15 troops nearly a year ago. UN spokesman said Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called on all armed groups to stop their death the stabilizing activities which continue to add to the suffering of the population and complicates the response to the ongoing Ebola outbreak. Gabon has amended the constitution to allow the vice president or prime minister to run cabinet meetings if the president is temporarily unavailable. In a move to avert a political crisis brought about by the ill health of President Ali Bongo, who remains in hospital in Saudi Arabia after suffering what is rumored to be a stroke last month. The 59-year-old president has not been seen in public since, and the state of his health is unknown. Some are even now questioning whether he was still alive. The decision by the Constitutional Court, which the opposition says is illegal, is the first move to fill the vacuum. At least 42 persons are feared killed in a bus fire in southern Zimbabwe. State broadcaster Zach reports that a bus was traveling from Bulawayo City to Basebridge when a suspected gas cylinder thought to belong to a passenger leaked and caught fire around midnight in Gwadan City. More than 20 persons were injured and taken to the hospital and last week 50 persons were killed when two buses collided. Kosher traders have said Tanzania's plan to buy the country's entire kosher nut crop this year could lead to a global shortage, with processors in Vietnam and India likely to be hit first. President John Magufuli has ordered a 94% increase to kosher nut prices to protect farmers from low prices and told his government to acquire the estimated 220,000 tons of the crop after private buyers refused to buy at the higher, highest price. Owner of India-based commodity trading company Velo Bridge Justin Gopta said if the not are not sold to buyers in Vietnam waiting for them, there is going to be a shortage. He says no other country harvests during the same period as Tanzania. Tanzania exports 75 percent of East Africa's kosher crops. The International Nut and Dried Fruit Council Foundation official data show its export revenues doubled to more than half uh, a million dollars last year from $270 million in 2016. The U.S. has announced it is reducing its forces in Africa by about 10% over the next few years. More than 7,000 military forces currently serve in the U.S. Africa Command. A Pentagon statement said in West Africa, where many jihadist groups are active, the emphasis will shift from tactical assistance to advising, assisting, liaising, and sharing intelligence. A U.S. official speaking on condition of anonymity said the reduction of troops would likely take place over three years and could include countries like Kenya, Cameroon, and Mali. U.S. media reports U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis wants to focus resources saved in Africa for potential future conflicts with Russia and China. Morocco has inaugurated Africa's fastest train. A new first high-speed train will have traveling time between the commercial and industrial hubs of Casablanca and Tangier to about two hours. Morocco's King Mohammed VI and French President Emmanuel Macron boarded a train for the inaugural trip from Tangier to the capital Rabat. The project took seven years to build and was jointly funded by France and Morocco with several Arab states. The train planned to run at 320 km speed per hour is about twice as fast as South Africa's high-speed quadrant linking Johannesburg International Airport to the city's financial district, Santon. The king has named the first line Al Borak after a mythical winged creature that transported the prophets to the heavens. Well, we return into national news. 
Number of missing doubles to 631 in California wildfires. And later sport, Super Eagles arrive in South Africa. You are watching ANN. Are you sure you want to do this? Adam, go and bring us your husband. Okay, hello baby. We're in this together, okay? Can you hear me? Keep coming forward. Wait, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> you okay, Lee? See you alright? <laughs> Keep walking now. Keep walking to the left. Yes. You're almost here. Keep going. You are here. <laughs> wow, you did it. I'm just so glad I didn't have to use my cane to do this. And I am so glad no other man got you before me. Let me be your eyes. We will never stop working to give you a network you can rely on so you can enjoy life's special moments. MTN, everywhere you go. Welcome back. This is Anna News. On the international scene, California fire and local authorities say the number of people missing in northern California's devastating wildfires has risen to more than 600. The death toll is also rising. Seven more bodies were found in the charred remains of some homes. The campfire, the state's deadliest and most destructive, has killed at least 63 persons and destroyed nearly 12,000 buildings. Three more people have also died in the fire. President Donald Trump says that we will travel to California on Saturday to survey the damage, the damage rather, and meet some of those affected. At least 9,400 firefighters are currently battling wildfires across the state. The official list of missing persons from more, more than doubled from 300 to 631 on Thursday. Yamaha immigration authorities have arrested more than 100 suspected Rohingya on board. A boat off Yangon raising fears of a fresh wave of dangerous after a 2015 crackdown on people's smokers. The boat carrying 106 persons was stopped some 30 kilometers south of Yamaha's largest city. United Nations agencies say more than 700 Rohingya fled a sweeping army crackdown in Yamaha's Brakai state last year. UN investigators have accused the Yamaha army of genocidal intent and ethnic cleansing. Yamaha has denied almost all of the allegations, saying security forces were battling terrorists. Florida election officials have ordered a hand recount of ballots in a closely fought U.S. Senate race between Democratic incumbent Bill Nelson and Republican challenger Governor Rex Court. Nelson trailed Court by about 12,600 votes of the more than 8 million ballots cast following an electronic recount. Under state law, the Florida Department of State must trigger a manual recount if an electronic recount of ballots finds a margin of victory of less than a quarter percent. Vice President Mike Pence says the U.S. will not require North Korea to provide a full list of its nuclear and missile sites before President Donald Trump meets with Kim Jong-un for a second summit early next year. Washington and Pyongyang have been locked in a diplomatic standoff for weeks over which side will make concessions first. But by relaxing its demands ahead of a second Trump-Kim summit, the U.S. may have just blinked first. Rather than requiring a declaration of nuclear weapons sites as a prerequisite to a second meeting with Trump, Pence said the administration will insist on developing a verifiable plan to disclose those sites while the two leaders are in the same room. 
Australia's Treasurer George Friedenberg says Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamed had a history of anti-Jewish statements and an escalating war of words over the possibility Australia might move its Israeli embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Australian Prime Minister Kurt Morrison first proposed the move during a local election campaign last month, sparking Indonesian and Malaysian concerns. Mahathir raised the potential relocation in a meeting with Morrison in Singapore on Thursday, later telling reporters he feared it could increase the threat of attacks. Argentina's security ministry has said in a statement two Argentinians with suspected links to Lebanon's Hezbollah were arrested in the capital, Buenos Aires, on Thursday, ahead of the G20 summit due to take place in Buenos Aires this month end. Police discovered a small arsenal that included a rifle, one shotgun, and a number of pistols, among other weapons. Police said they also saw evidence of travel abroad, along with credentials in Arabic and an image of the Hezbollah flag. Police did not specify the nature of the travel or, or credentials and did not say whether the men had intention of attacking the G20 events. The two most high-ranking living leaders of the brutal Khmerug regime in Cambodia have been found guilty of genocide. The two most senior leaders of the ultra most group, still alive today, were convicted in a landmark ruling almost 40 years after the fall of a bloody regime that presided over the death of a quarter of the population. Their rule led some 2 million Cambodians dead from overwork, starvation and mass executions. The event covered by the verdict spanned four years of the Pol Pot region and included extensive crimes against humanity after the group seized control of Cambodia from 1975 to 1979. Up next, Port. Super Eagles arrive in South Africa. Stay with us. You are watching ANN. If you know it, go internet. Or follow for Twitter. You know it, not for Tosent. Or get it for Tosent. Now because you they use Super Lassa. Your phone no they answer. See me, see Wahala. To a smartphone today and get double data for six months on any MTN data bundle you buy. Simply purchase a smartphone from any store anywhere in Nigeria or bring your current smartphone from any network. Insert your MTN SIM card to start enjoying your double data bonus. Offer is open to all new and existing MTN subscribers. Join the largest smartphone movement today. Make it up for your hand. We are on the road every day, canvassing throughout Africa for news you really need. We follow this story everywhere, from every corner of Nigeria to the wide African expanse. We bring you what's making headlines, we connect you with news you can use. ANN, African News Network, in a truly African spirit. Welcome back, this is ANN News and Sports. The Super Eagles are in Johannesburg, ready for Saturday's 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying fixture against Bayana Bayana. The Eagles were having a fuel of the FNB Stadium in Johannesburg this afternoon. After Saturday's duel, they will immediately commence preparations for next Tuesday's friendly encounter against the Cranes of Uganda in Asaba. The World Anti-Doping Agency has revealed that Nigeria's National Anti-Doping Agency had been declared non-compliant. Jonathan Taylor, the chair of WADA's Independence Compliance Review Committee, has informed the board at a meeting in Baku that the Nigerian agency did not meet international anti-doping standards. Last year, the Nigerian National Anti-Doping Committee collected 28 samples, seven of which tested positive according to data from WADA. What a shame. That is in the news this evening. Thank you for joining us. For details on these and other stories, visit our website in anafrica.net. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Africa TV. 
I am Olajumokyo Latunji. Have a great weekend.